Patrick Walsh and Paul Damgard were complete strangers who shared a love of traveling, photography, and sharks. I had always wanted to dive with sharks. I wanted to see the biggest and the baddest, which you know, obviously is the great white. Patrick and Paul meet on this shark diving trip off the Guadalupe Islands. Both hope to catch the ultimate shot of a great white with their cameras. We actually had a, a, a talk with the, the crew members, and they kind of tried to lower our expectations a little bit and just let us know that, hey, these are wild animals, and there's no guarantee that you're going to see a shark. To help lure sharks close to the cage, the boat crew drops in a giant tuna head right next to the viewing window. The crews can see these sharks as they come in to try and take the bait and they pull it away at the last minute. And that's what draws them in close enough so that we can see them. Patrick and Paul take the dangerous plunge together, 20 feet beneath the surface. They breathe through hookah lines attached to their dive harnesses and connected to an air tank on the boat. We're the only ones that were in the water at that point. The sharks were kind of lumbering around and not really too aggressive. And there wasn't very many in, in our line of sight. Then out of the blue, Patrick spots the unmistakable jaws and the ominous dorsal fin of a 16-foot-long great white. Locals call her Cece, and she's closing in fast. I tapped Paul on the shoulder and pointed it out to him, and we both focused on the shot and just tracked the shark as it was coming up. But they're about to get the close-up they never expected. Next thing you know, it's in our face. It's in the cage. Hit with so much force, it was like a car accident. And I couldn't believe what I was saying. The trouble starts when Cece first hits the bait. Great whites have a thin membrane that covers their eyes when they attack prey or food. It's supposed to protect them. But today, it causes Cece to slam blindly into the viewing window at the front of the cage. And when this 2,500-pound monster from the deep starts thrashing, the front of the cage buckles like a tin can. Kind of came to the realization that if I don't get bitten, I'm going to get crushed to death. You know, there's just no way I could see myself getting out of this situation. In the chaos, Patrick and Paul get separated. Paul gets stuck behind the shark. He's basically climbing up on top of this shark and I'm looking at the silhouette of this shark and Paul and I just see red and I see Paul and I'm thinking it's over for him. I'm next. Patrick sneaks out through an escape hatch at the bottom of the cage but he's still in deep trouble. Once I got out of this cage I'm looking down there's two other sharks circling below me. I've got a shark completely occupying the cage that I was just in. And it was just like, how much worse could it get? Patrick knows a 16-foot great white is capable of swallowing a man whole and ripping him to shreds. I just wanted out as quickly as possible, and I was stuck. Unfortunately, the crew started yanking on my hookah line. Patrick swims for his life. But just as he reaches the surface, his heart sinks. I literally sprung out of the water, and I'm greeted by the entire crew, and everyone is just terrified. They get a terrified look on their face. And I'm just thinking at that point, what happened to Paul? The last time Patrick saw Paul alive, he was literally riding on top of the killer shark. But look closely. That's Cece swimming out the bottom of the crush cage. Paul knows it's now or never and makes a mad dash. I could hear the people on board, you know, yelling and screaming, get him out, get him out. When I was heading for the escape hatch, where Patrick had already gotten out, and I was stuck, I couldn't move. At that time, I really feared the worst. I could see the shark on my left, and about that time, I'm thinking, you know, you could pull a little faster right now because I'm not in a very good position. Paul is pulled to safety in the nick of time. When they pulled me up, I mean, that shark is coming right 
for my leg. And they just pick me up enough that I'm able to pull my legs up as that shark skims right underneath my feet. I could not believe that he was sitting there and he was completely unscathed. He wasn't bleeding. All his limbs were there. And we were sitting on the deck. We looked at each other and we said, is your camera still rolling? He goes, yeah, I never shut it off. Neither did I. So we both jump up, run in, plug our cameras back in, and, and start viewing the, the, the video. And we're going, all right, we got it. Once strangers, the two men have remained friends, forever linked by a great white named Cece. Absolutely no regrets. The whole trip was an amazing experience. But this particular instance was certainly uh, a life-changing event. I took this trip, and I got just about everything I thought I could get out of it. I got great shots. Uh, I got the shark in the cage with me. So I don't know why I'd want to go back. Uh, there's not a whole lot left.